Welcome back friends to another New World video. Today we're going to be talking about New World's Endgame. I find a lot of people asking the question, uh, Baggins, I've just hit level 65 and uh, what do I need to do now to get myself into PvP or mutated expeditions? Like what sort of gear should I be looking for? How do I actually get some good items? Uh, so that's what today's video is going to be about. We're going to be talking about uh, this number up here and all of these different slots and generally what makes a good weapon, uh, good armor, good jewelry, uh, the artifacts you can go for, and also just how to sort of get started on that journey, because a lot of people find, and, and rightly so, that after you're done leveling up, the game kind of opens up, it doesn't really hold your hand anymore, and you just got to kind of figure out what you're going to do. So I'm going to give you guys some pointers in terms of where you can go get some good weapons, armor, jewelry, etc., and what also makes good weapons, armor, and jewelry. Now, as always with all these videos, you will be able to scrub along to find the relevant section that you're interested in. So if you've already got some good armor, you're looking for good weapons or whatever, you'll be able to scrub along in the video. And as always, friends, if you find these videos useful, I know every YouTuber says this, but the old like and subscribe, especially now we're in the dark days of New World content where there's not really a whole lot going on with the game. So if you guys do find these videos useful, a like, a comment, uh, all of that stuff, it does help out. You know, it's basically like feed the YouTube algorithm so uh, it knows that, you know, I'm still I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so anyway, with that uh, out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into gearing in New World. Now, one thing I want to include as a sort of resource to help you guys in gearing and just generally like the end game of new world is this discord section that i've been fleshing out here so in the description down below you'll find a link to the discord it's discord.gg forward slash the shire um in here we talk about new world stuff there's uh you know you can post pictures of your transmog in here as well but we also have this build guide section um and you can filter by sort of different weapons you're interested in so if you want to see the spear builds that i've currently got uh, running if you want to see things that involve life staff and uh, just general sort of PvE and PvP uh, you can find you know more and more guides hopefully uh, over the next month or so I'm going to be adding quite a bit of content to here something that I've recently worked on is the good gear guide this is going to function for me almost as kind of like notes as we go through this video um, to you know explain what is good gear how the gypsum kiln works and all of that stuff so if you guys want to check out this guide uh, I did to try to go pretty extensively, so it is, you know, it's quite a lot of text in here, but at the same time, tried to, you know, uh, not go over the top. Again, you can find a link to this in the description down below. Check out the builds, the guides, all of that stuff that we have on Discord. So the first thing that I want to kick off with this video is best in slot. You'll see people talking about this every now and again. You might see it uh, pop up in trade chat occasionally, people wanting to sell something, and they'll call it BIS, B-I-S. Best in slot is basically... You know, when you look at a particular, like for a helmet, for example, this is a slot on your character. Uh, the best possible piece of gear that you could wear as a helmet would be best in slot. So we actually have a pretty good example of this. We have health, refreshing, elemental aversion. I think all of these perks are S tier. Uh, very, very good. The only thing that's letting this down is it's uh, just missing two points of gear score. If it was 700 gear score, we would get one extra stat. So it would be giving me 32 constitution. So this is not quite best in slot, um, but it also leads on to another point as well, in that best in slot is subjective. So I like elemental aversion quite a lot as a healer. Um, I feel like in mutations, it's pretty good for reducing some of the incoming uh, mutated damage when enemies have 50% of the damage converted to fire frost. It's also good for uh, fire staffs. It's good against uh, syncretic bow and stuff like that in PvP. But some people really prefer uh, enchanted board. They say enchanted board is better and that's the one you would be going for. And maybe even a tank might prefer to have grit ward. So best in slot is kind of subjective. Also, this health is another point of contention as well. Uh, recently, over the past couple of months, there's been people, uh, these cameras covering it, there's been people saying that health maybe isn't that good and instead you want to be running slash conditioning or thrust conditioning or something like that. So uh, basically the point that I'm trying to get to here without spending too long is best in slot or like the best possible gear is quite subjective and that is going to apply to this video as well. So the recommendations that I'm going to make for good weapons and armor and jewelry it is subjective to my own opinion. Now, I have like thousands of hours of experience in New World, but still, yeah, I am generally more PvE oriented. I usually spend a lot of time playing with life staff, so uh, what I'm going to recommend may not be the best for everybody, but it's probably going to be pretty good, especially if you're a New World returning player without too much uh, familiarity with the game and what's been happening over the past year or so. Now, to accompany this uh, and to talk about like best in slot, I did make a video guide a little while ago where we go over the best perks that you can have on every item in the game 
for PVE. So, you know, when it comes to your armor, when it comes to your jewelry, and then even every individual weapon as well, including the weapon perks. And we sort of categorize those all from S tier being like the best possible perk you could have on that item down to, I think it was D tier. So if you guys want to check out the video, it'll probably be a good one to sort of, um, top up on the knowledge going into your gearing journey a new world getting to 700 gear score getting good items i will put a link to that video up in the top right it'll be that little annotated box and again it'll be in the description down below and probably at the end of this video as well but yeah the uh, best perks for new world season four um it, it is a video that is available there if you haven't seen it already you might find it useful as well when it comes to determining you know what what is a good item going to look like right so we've covered the basics of like what a good item is and uh, you know i've given you guys some resources that you can look at there now let's actually talk about how to get those items you know the thing that you clicked on the video for um one of the best sources and and i think like a big difference in new world today compared to how it was in brimstone sands or a year ago since the rise of the angry earth expansion uh, they have added in the ability to craft gear in the gypsum kiln and the gear that pops out here is 700 gear score guaranteed so i can actually make a pair of heavy boots here which have health and shirking fortification um, and then the third perk is going to be randomly assigned when i hit this craft button some people get a little bit confused by this because they think they're making a purple item because it shows you a purple item up there it will be legendary just the game doesn't have a way to show a legendary item if it doesn't have the third perk so you can envision this as like ideally they should put a piece of text underneath it that says you know uh random perk at third gear score but uh, you know we'll just go ahead and craft one real quick so ideally i'd be looking for refreshing enchanted board elemental aversion if we're going off of that perk tier list uh, but if we just hit craft here strike conditioning okay maybe not the best perk uh, slash or thrust conditioning would have been better but what i'm trying to demonstrate here is um that was pretty easy to do. I've got a 700 gear score piece of armor there. Not quite best in slot, but you know, if you're a brand new player who's just hit 65, that's not too bad. Now you might be asking, well, Baggins, I don't have the option to do that. When I go to the gypsum kiln, I don't see this stuff. The reason why you're not seeing the option to craft these items is because you need the materia. Now I know then you're gonna say, oh, well, this is a bit of tomfoolery and trickery Baggins, because to do the materia, you need to do the dungeons and to do the dungeons, you need good gear. So, you know, we've just got a chicken and an egg sort of thing going on here. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you guys press F9 while you're in game, um, you can bring up the season pass and one thing that you'll notice or hopefully have, have seen um, as you work your way through the season pass you'll get these free chests so this is on the free track at the top you have these mutation chests and they give you dense mutator material so you can see that second reward down there uh, and then we go a little bit further back there's also some mutation chests here as well uh, amazon since the beginning of the expansion which came out in october has been giving these in the past two season passes so season four season three and i assume it'll probably happen in season five in march as well you will be able to get these boxes on the free track which give you materia so you will need to open them up and then you'll have the materia in your inventory but then subsequently you'll be able to go to the gypsum kiln and you're not going to be able to craft everything in here. They don't give you like so much material that you can make every single item, but you'll probably be able to make one or two pieces. And sometimes one or two pieces, especially when it comes to a weapon, that can really bump up your average gear score in a major way. And combined with the next section of this video that we're going to talk about, it can probably get you to 650 average gear score and 650 is a really sweet spot to be at because that means that you can start doing mutation difficulty one dungeons. And even though it's not in the game right now, uh, by the time this video goes out, there is going to be cross of a group finder. So you'll just be able to hit a button and it will throw you into a mutated expedition, provided you have 650 gear score or higher, just with random players. And it should be pretty easy to complete. And that's going to be so much like you're going to be able to accelerate all the way to 700 gear score so quickly. You just need to be able to sort of complete that first step, which is getting to 650 average gear score. And like I say, you'll be able to do that very quickly just by making an item or two in the gypsum kiln and you get the materia from these boxes. Now for a full breakdown on uh, weapons and armor and jewelry, like things that I think are worthwhile making in the gypsum kiln, like the best pieces per category. Again, funny enough, we have a video, we have a resource for that. I will link that up in the top right of this video. And again, in the description down below, it's the gypsum kiln crafting guide. Uh, because yeah, it's 700 gear score items. The third perk is randomly rolled, but you can re-roll the item um, through the upgrade system, which is another thing that I want to cover while we're talking about the gypsum kiln. So if you guys scroll all the way down to the bottom in the gypsum kiln, you're going to find uh, this section down here. It's called named item crafting. And basically what it looks at is items that are in your inventory right now, or they can be in your storage shed. So I think we've got a storage shed filled with shields over here. 
And any of the ones that are named, so they have this sort of shiny sheen to them, and they also have to say requirement level 61. You have a problem sometimes where you can have items that are below. Uh, so this is a named item, but it's not requirement level 61. So this isn't gonna show up as an upgrade option. And one of the thing is quest items as well, kind of frustratingly and a bit confusingly. If you get given a named item as a quest reward, those also don't count as well. So you guys might be thinking, oh, I've got a, I've got a named item. But uh, yeah, if it is a um, an item that's basically uh, below 625 gear score, although that's not necessarily always true. Effectively, you're looking for requirement level 61 and then it needs to say named. If you have those items and you have them sitting in your... Uh, character's bag or you have them in a storage shed so basically not equipped to your character if it's equipped to your character take it off get it into the bag make sure you take it out of your gear set as well when you go to the gypsum kiln with that item in your bag and you scroll all the way down to the bottom you'll see there is an option to upgrade the item now again we have the same sort of confusing system where it shows it as a purple item uh, and even if we go ahead and lock in a perk here, so let's say we're going to put Unending Thor on this helmet, you still don't see it there, but you do see it over here, and it will become legendary. Don't worry, it doesn't show uh, in the UI that perk being added in, but if I was to go ahead and hit Craft here, I would then have a 700 gear score helmet with Elemental Aversion, Enchanter Board, and then Unending Thor, or whatever the third perk, you know, related to the Craft mod that I want to put on that item. Now, this can be really, really good, because you can get some items, which we're going to talk a Later on in this video uh, that are pretty low gear score they're, they're very easy to farm but they're, they're quite low gear score so if i just go to uh let's see warden's rise maybe we get a few items in here um let's grab something that would be okay so this life ring rapier for example 647 gear score so that's not very good you know we, we want items to be at least 650 but ideally we want them to be 700 if i take this bad boy out of here and then i go to the gypsum kiln with it um, and we scroll all the way down to the bottom again i will see the life ring rapier in here and we can upgrade this to 700 gear score and we can put a third perk on and this can actually become like a best in slot rapier if we were to go ahead and put uh, i think it would probably be omni directional evade is what i would go for on here um, then we could have a 700 gear score vicious rogue omni directional evade and this rapier relatively easy to get again don't worry we're, we're going to cover this later on in the video um you just need, then need these materials that you can this you buy off of the trading posts of weapon matrix uh, armor matrix jewelry matrix you can craft yourself but you will need to level up your crafting all the way to 250 we're probably going to do a separate video on that because it's going to be a pretty a big deep dive dark matter you're going to get as you play the game you get these from doing mutated expeditions you get these from doing outpost rush gypsum orbs you can craft at this kiln here it's up in the top of the menu and then chromatic seals you have to buy these from your faction vendor so if you haven't seen that yet if i go down to my faction vendor over here who is the covenant faction vendor Vendor. Um, this is going to be a very important material that you probably want to start buying. The problem is they do cost 5,000 gold, which then is going to lead you to another video of like, how do we get gold? And again, that's another, that's a topic for another video. But if you do want to see that, let me know in the comments down below or just hop into the stream. I'll be happy to answer any questions there. But yeah, chromatic seals from the faction vendor, dark vendor from mutated expeditions, outpost rush, a variety of other things. Gypsum orbs, you can actually also buy from the faction vendor, but you can just make them in that gypsum kiln if you scroll up to the top of the menu. And then the weapon matrix, armor matrix, jewelry matrix, you can make through crafting. Um, so I think, is it weaponsmithing for weapon matrix? That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, or alternatively, you can buy them off the trading post for a few thousand gold each. Uh, but that is a really powerful thing that you can do after the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion is just take sort of uh, named items. Two perks are always uh, like going to be locked in. So anybody who gets a Life Ring Rapier will always have these two exact perks. But the third perk you can choose or if it drops at 675 gear score or higher, um, then the third perk is randomly assigned to it. But again, you can re-roll it and have it be whatever perk you want. So I can re-roll this uh, strike conditioning here in the gypsum kiln if I want to and that gives you a lot of customization and like I say a really quick a quick way to jump to 700 gear score and uh, get some really really good items at the same time. Now one of the significant changes to New World's end game gearing that's happened since the rise of the Angry Earth expansion is the introduction of artifacts. These are special uh, unique items that you can only get one of per character. You can't salvage them, you can't chuck them on the ground and they typically uh, are acquired through a variety of different means. A lot of them come from the PvP rewards track, and we'll cover more on that later. And then uh, some of them come from doing mutated expeditions. So like uh, the final boss of a mutated expedition, most pretty much every mutated expedition, the final boss will drop an artifact with the exception of Glacial Tarn where it's the first boss 
Um, but yeah, generally running mutated expeditions, difficulty one, two, or three, that will also drop artifacts as well. Now the problem is, uh, when it comes to outpost rush, maybe you want to get a little bit more geared up before you do that, because you know you want to do outpost rush to level up the PvP rewards track to get artifacts. Um, if you want to do mutated expeditions, again, you need to get geared up. So, are there any artifacts that we can get out there that don't really require that much effort? Because the benefit of artifacts, not only are a lot of them really, really good, like potentially best and slot items, they're also always is 700 gear score uh, and that means that you can bump up your average gear score up here very quickly which again gets us closer to that 650 mark which is the sweet spot for then being able to do uh, mutated expeditions which again rapidly accelerates us to 700 anyway <laughs> with that ramble the initial question are there any easy artifacts to get yes there are uh, i would say three artifacts that are pretty easy to get uh, one of which we're at right now the spot for it and that is the artifact chest piece called featherweight now initially when i first saw this artifact i got pretty confused by it because it was like uh, the thing about this artifact is it doesn't weigh anything and i was like well how is that beneficial you know like i put it in my bag and it doesn't weigh down my character but that doesn't seem to be too good the thing that i missed about it is it doesn't weigh anything in terms of your equip load so that whether i'm wearing this chest or not you can see my character's like equip load bar doesn't go up so it's you know technically it's as if my character's chest is naked but my character's chest is not naked instead it's being provided with the armor it's being provided with all of the perks from it it's uh it's actually pretty interesting because then it allows you to get away with having like some heavy armor pieces and still being considered in a light equip load and getting the benefit of the dodge rule and all that other cool stuff as well um so this artifact is obtained by killing an enemy which spawns right here where i am um, and that enemy is called Nurmur. It's like a birdman. So I am located right now in Scalefang Enclave. We had to sort of go up to the top of this tree. So I'll just walk you back down real quick while he spawns. Um, it's like I say, it's an easy artifact to farm. Uh, it's something that you definitely want to be going to pick up. I think it's like a 10% or 20% drop chance. So it's not guaranteed. And sadly, it does look like he's got a bit of a longer respawn time than when I first killed him. <laughs> but either way, uh, completely soloable enemy you might find that there'll be other people also waiting here on your server to kill him as well so uh, definitely like an artifact to go for and one that you do want to farm one other thing to be aware of when it comes to artifacts oh here we go well, I'm, I'm gonna say like here we go here's our chance i'm not gonna get the artifact because i already have it it's one of the things that's probably worth mentioning if you have the artifact uh, you can't get a second copy so once you've got an artifact like that's it um, kind of like with the named items, you do get the option to upgrade the final perk on them. Man, I am just struggling here. <laughs> Hold on, am I gonna die? Uh, as I said, it is it is uh, relatively easy. I know I'm making it look like it's a struggle right now, but uh, my stats are gonna be uh, all over the place. So I can show you those in a moment, but I don't think we have a setup that's even remotely uh, appropriate for the weapons that we're currently doing. I think stats are in uh strength intelligence focus constant yeah so we, we have uh we have a little bit of strength but a lot of points in intelligence but it's anyway that's besides the point it, sh it should be easy to solo i'm just set up really really badly i don't have my stats right or anything like that uh this guy killing him several times gets you the featherweight artifact once you equip the artifact to your character you're going to find that you have a series of quests to do so if i take this one off and then i put this artifact on here um, you now have to do these sort of challenges. So I've got to go kill this thing, uh, do this thing here, do this objective, and then finally upgrade it in the gypsum kiln. And the upgrading in the gypsum kiln is similar to what we talked about with the, um, you know, the life ring rapier and the other stuff that we showed in the gypsum kiln section of the video. So if you missed that, again, you can scrub back and find that section. But yeah, uh, you do want to be doing at least these quests. And when you finally get the resources, you do also want to upgrade the item as well. Now, when it comes to upgrading artifacts and choosing which perk to put on them, you bet your biscuits, we have a video for that as well. We have videos for lots of different topics on the world. In case you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. We've got a big back catalog of a ton of different videos which hopefully you'll find useful but yeah for that video when it comes to which perks to put on which artifacts I, I went through every artifact in the game and there'll be a link to that just up in the top right appearing sometime around now also links in the description down below as well so that is artifacts uh actually no that's not artifacts because we've also got two more to talk about as well we said there was going to be some easy artifacts that you can get another artifact that is very easy
easy to get is the attuned leather pants. Now, a lot of you guys might already have these uh, when you're watching the video, because if you've, if you've hit level 65, most likely the way that you got to level 65 was doing the main storyline in uh, Elysian Wilds. If you haven't done the main storyline yet, you can start the quest for it. Um, the It's different depending on which faction you're playing. So if you're Covenant, if you're the yellow faction, um, then the quest will be in Requater. If you are Syndicate, it's somewhere in Shattered Mountain. It's either one, uh, this one or this one. And then if you are the Marauders, green, uh, it's in Caliburn Capital in Eden Grove. So if you haven't chosen a faction, go choose one. Stop being silly. Uh, and then you need to go pick up that quest. You go all the way through the Elysian Wilds. So you just keep following the main story through there. And then the final quest after... I won't spoil it just in case you haven't seen the uh, the fight or whatever. But after the final quest, the final boss fight, uh, you then get the Attuned Leather Pants as a quest reward. And again, by equipping these to your character, uh, you do a series of tasks with them and you will get the perks unlocked and then you can have the decision as to what is the final perk that you put on them. But these are also very, very good for a new player, somebody who's fresh to level 65. Now the final artifact that I think you can attain relatively easy solo that is actually worthwhile you know, trying to go for as well is the artifact flail. It's called Odo. And uh, yeah, it's not it's not incredible. You know, it's not as good as Featherweight or Attuned Leather Pants, that's for sure. And it's not as good as some of the other artifact weapons like Serenity, but uh, it meets the criteria that I think you could get it solo and it would be okay to use as you're starting your gearing journey. So um, one big benefit of weapons is they count towards your average gear score. Uh, more than anything else. So putting on a high gear score weapon will bump this um, number up really quickly. And again, one thing that we're current, you know, trying to do with this video is get you gear score to 650 or to 675, because then you can do mutation difficulty one or mutation difficulty two, which then again, uh, sort of hyper accelerates your journey to 700 gear score or very close to it. Uh, so we're currently located um, in the tunnels underneath like Tribunal High Mound right now. There is actually a way that you can go to High Mound's Rest and you sort of snake along the side of the cliff here. So if you think you can like jump up from here and then you sort of meander back and forth and you, there's a hole up in the ceiling you can drop in so you don't have to run all the way in through all the elite enemies. Enemies. Now, Vanash is a bit of a tricky one. This is the guy who can drop the um, artifact flail. It is not like super easy to kill solo, so you might need to have a little bit of lifesteal in your build. And uh, on that note, we are going to cover that just a little bit later on in the video as well. But again, just some sort of careful positioning, uh, some lifesteal, some potions, or some form of self-healing. Like in this case, we're using a build that is uh, almost des entirely designed to just solo things right now. I call it the uh, solo anything build, which you're also going to be able to find on the Discord as well. So if you guys want to check out uh, various builds, whether it's a build for soloing content like we have now, or, um, you know, a, a tank build, DPS build, healer build, or whatever. Uh, again, go check out the Discord. The build guides are all in there as well. Uh, but Vanash, once we kill this guy, again, it's somewhere 10, 20% drop chance to drop the artifact flail called Odo. And just like with Featherweight and with the Attuned Leather Pants, if you equip the item to your character, then you will be able to uh, upgrade it by completing a, a series of like kill quests and stuff with uh, Odo equipped. There we are. And of course, we're not going to get Odo because we already have it. Uh, one one thing that I want to uh, talk about real quick is the, the overall concept of artifacts is you can only have one equipped at a time. So I have an artifact chest piece on right now. And if I go and tr try and put some artifact legs on, uh, it won't let me. It says you already have another armor artifact equipped. So you can have one weapon uh, artifact, one uh, armor artifact and one jewelry artifact at any given time. So you can't have two pieces of jewelry. Uh, you can't like finagle it as well. You can have three on, but it have to be in the separate slots. So you guys might be asking about artifact jewelry. Like, okay, Baggins, you've talked about a weapon that you can get. You've talked about armor. None of the artifact jewelry I think you can get in an entirely solo fashion. Now there is uh, some stuff from the PvP rewards track. And again, uh, that will be coming up in the video shortly. But for, for the purposes of trying to, you know, uh, quickly explain and actually like things that I think are legitimately quite easy to get solo that you have featherweight you have the attuned leather pants and you have Odo getting any of those um, well it would be like featherweight and Odo or attuned leather pants and Odo putting those on bump up your average gear score allow you to get into mutation difficulty one much easier now on the topic of mutated expeditions uh, we've been saying this throughout the video these are in my opinion one of the fastest and quickest ways to get geared up to get to 700 gear score to get some decent items mutated expeditions are the way to go. Now, it's not solely just from named items. It's not always going to be, uh, you know, getting a particular named item. It's just the sort of general loot that drops throughout the dungeon. Now, 
sometimes you can get unlucky and you'll just get a bunch of junk loot. Other times you can get some pretty good gear. The way that it works in terms of difficulty one, difficulty two, and difficulty three is you will need to have a average gear score. So you can see 650 if we get rid of all these pop-ups that are going to appear up here. 650 is the recommended gear score for difficulty one. We need 675 for difficulty two and 695. It doesn't even show me actually. It's kind of a bit uh shocking that it should let me know but it's 695 is the recommended for difficulty three and if we're under that uh, we're going to be struggling quite a lot in fact uh yeah it's it's basically impossible like if you're especially with 695 even if you're at 694 it becomes significantly so much harder but for the purpose of this video and and for like gearing in general i think you should stick to difficulty one and difficulty two uh to start getting geared up you are going to receive a lot more like uh, 700 gear score items in difficulty three, but I don't believe it's going to be included in the cross server group finder. And after this video comes out, that is going to be a huge boon to getting geared. So mutated expeditions are a really good source of gear. Now, rather than do like a, a 30 minute segment of this video where we talk about every single good drop that you can get from mutated ex expeditions, instead, I'm just going to defer you guys to the guide. Um, so again, if you haven't seen already, uh, discord.gg forward slash the Shire, or there's a link in the description down below. Uh, I covered like a few different pieces of uh, sort of medium, light, heavy armor, weapons, and jewelry, uh, and which dungeons are worthwhile going for. Now from doing a little bit of research, from doing the mutated expeditions myself, and taking a look at the loot table, uh, what you can see here is there's going to be a bit of a pattern. So Glacial Tarn, Savage Divide, Lazarus, Empyrean Forge, Barnacles, and Ennead. In my opinion, those are the best dungeons to be running when they're in mutated form. So Dynasty, not so great. The Depths, again, not that good. Genesis, not that good. There's, there are going to be uh, some, some variation here because, again, it goes back to that initial topic right at the beginning of the video in terms of what is best in slot. But generally, Lazarus, Empyrean Forge, Ennead, Barnacles... Uh, Glacial Tarn and Savage Divide, they do actually have like a lot of items that can drop uh, that are pretty good. Um, just the sort of generic non-named items that drop there are pretty good. Uh, Lazarus in particular, right now we have mutated Lazarus after this video goes live. I'm not sure what the mutation cycle is going to be, but it has a lot of gear that um, is called the Forgotten Protectors, and the Forgotten Protectors stuff is pretty solid, so I've got a pair of gloves here. Um, the ice proof is just because of the gem, but they always have health and elemental aversion, and then the third perk is randomly assigned as long as it's 675 gear score or higher. So so the Forgotten Protectors exists as light armor. So I have a piece of it here that is a uh, light with focus. So we got health elemental version slash conditioning. But if I go down here, I have a helmet that is again, the Forgotten Protectors, but this time it's a heavy helmet with strength. Again, it's got health and elemental aversion guaranteed, but the third perk randomly rolled. We have a light pair of legs, 700 gear score, health refreshing elemental aversion. You can get these just by doing difficulty one or difficulty two Lazarus. They're not named, so you can't upgrade them at the gypsum kiln. But Mutated Expeditions, really good source of gear. Really cannot stress it enough how important, you know, like getting in there. If you just want to, you know, get some good items, it really is worthwhile getting yourself into M1 of particularly Laz, Empyrean, Barnacles. But you guys get the idea. Uh, check out the guide for a more of an in-depth look at, you know, which pieces of gear I recommend and why. Now, for the next section of this video, we're going to be talking about getting geared through PvP. I know I've been pushing uh, Mutated Expeditions over and over again, and I still think it is great to do. But the good news is, if you just want to do PvP um, at level 65, it is actually a reasonable way to get geared up. So one of the things that is awesome about doing PvP is once you go to the PvP rewards track and you get this number to say 20 or higher, you have the chance to start receiving artifacts. So once you're at track 20, silver or higher, um, on checkpoint 3 over here, there is a chance that an artifact pops up. I think there's like 8 or 9 of them right now. And some of them are really, really, really good. Like this uh, greatsword here, Serenity, is like legitimately one of the best weapons in the game, hands down. So the fact that artifacts are available just by pushing through PvP, and some of them are incredibly good, uh, definitely worthwhile. There is also some gear that you can get from the PvP rewards track as you're leveling up. Now, a lot of it is pretty rubbish, it's got to be said, but if you don't have any good items at all, then it might be worthwhile picking some of these up. There are named items you can get as well. So I got Grasping Futility here, uh, which has two perks set, and then the third perk, Random, and the same sort of system applies to this. Um, now, if you are going to be leveling up and you want to get geared through PvP, the best way to do it is Outpost Rush. Now, the good news is there's no real gear score requirement on here. In fact, there's even gear score scaling. So if your items are below 675, they get scaled up to 675. So if I went in with, um, you know, let's see, I don't have anything. 
Uh, if this was 620 gear score, it would become 675 in Outpost Rush to keep me somewhat competitive. Now, being at 700 gear score, or people who have artifacts, people who have like really good perks on their gear, they're still going to have an advantage over you, but at least it's somewhat fair. And the good news is you don't necessarily have to be the best player to win Outpost Rush. Sometimes you can just stand there and build a door, and, and that's a pretty effective strategy. But again, that's for a different video, and if you know, you know. Nonetheless, though, playing Outpost Rush, at the end of each game of Outpost Rush, provided you want AFK, you will be rewarded with an Outpost Rush cash. And these are actually another sort of thing that really actually contributes to gearing through PvP in a pretty major way. So we have quite a lot of these here. Again, you get one every time you finish a game. If you pop open the box, it will offer you items typically based on what you're currently wearing. Now, this was a bit of a weird one here where I don't really think any of these items were... Oh no, it's because it's a named item. Um, so yeah, we got a named legendary there. We got a round shield and we got a 691 gear score chest. Now these items, as I was about to say, do have loot biasing. So when you open up an outpost rush chest, most likely it's going to be offering you items based on what you're currently wearing. So I should, in theory, be receiving um, heavy items. And then it's going to be some combination of either strength, dexterity, or constitution, because that's where my stats are. And most likely it's going to be spears or great swords as well. So let's see if we can see that in action. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> we can avoid gauntlet. Oh, again, this is a named item, though. So I don't think named items apply to it. Um, come on, one more. One more for the... Okay, there we go. Two heavy helmets. I don't know why I keep getting round shields. They're supposed to be loot biasing, um, and it is supposed to offer you items based on what you're currently wearing. And what I'm trying to suggest here is if you go to the trading post and just buy the cheapest junk that you can, as long as it's somewhat relevant to what you want. So even if you buy a really, like you want to start playing as a healer and you want to get geared up as a healer, just put on the cheapest life staff you can find. And it should, in theory, start offering you more life staffs and put on light armor. Put more of your points in focus and you'll get offered light armor with focus you guys get the idea but what i'm saying is your q outpost rush it is actually a very effective way to um, level up your pvp rewards track it's generally much faster than 3v3 arena these days because uh, 3v3 arena isn't cross server and outpost rush is um, you'll be earning pvp xp you'll be earning azoth salt you'll be getting outpost rush boxes and you'll be you know pushing through the pvp rewards track so just queuing outpost rush back to back to back actually a pretty good way to get geared it's going to be slow to start with and you might feel like you're a bit of a disadvantage but the more games you go through the more gear you'll get and you also do get offered gold along the way as well so yeah just spamming out post rush i actually think is a pretty valid method for getting geared up a new world i don't think it's going to be as fast or as as effective as mutated expeditions but i wanted to definitely include a section for that um and and as i mentioned there are also there's a huge value of doing it to get to at least track 20 so then you can start seeing artifacts which is even if you're not interested in pvp at all some of the artifacts that are available from the pvp rewards track really really good for example Nim uh, serenity we already talked about and the nimble coat definitely want to be pushing through the pvp rewards track to try and unlock these artifacts right so for the next section of this video i was going to and i am still going to talk about uh weapons armor and jewelry now we do have a breakdown of each one of these sections within the video so the good news is that if you are after good items and you don't like the idea of doing outpost rush and you don't like the idea of doing mutated expeditions you're still not screwed there are a lot of items that you can get just as a solo player you can go out and farm these on your own so i am in an area of the map called sky song uh, crypt and at here there is a variety of different named enemies that you can kill that have a chance to drop uh, the taeyi items so if we're lucky here slayer rosalind is gonna give us an example of um you know a way that you can earn a decent end game item that you can use to then progress yourself further into you know uh, outpost rush mutated expeditions 3v3 arena whatever it is that you're interested in so again these enemies are all entirely solo soloable and uh right there right on cue we got the tei greatsword refreshing move leeching crosscut and you can upgrade this to choose the third perk that you want to put on it i would probably put trench and strikes so it's not ideal it's not as if we're going to be getting immediately super good items here we are going to need to take this to the gypsum kiln and upgrade it with all the materials that we talked about in the gypsum kiln section of the video but this sort of concept exists for pretty much every weapon several pieces of jewelry and armor in the game now that are not all located at sky song uh crypt so this is just specifically for the tei items but some of the tei items are very very good i use one in my end game tanking build right now like when i'm tanking difficulty three 
mutation ex mutated expeditions i use this sword over here and it's it's pretty flipping good i would say it's uh, very close to best in slot now the good news is like i said this exists for multiple different weapons armor and jewelry in new world and we've actually made a pretty extensive list here so if you're interested in anything in particular like you're looking for a good bow for example the syncretic bow if you click on this item um, then you can see what it is and we also have the recommendation of where to go farm it as well So farm named enemies just like we're doing here in Sky Sun Crypt You can farm named enemies in dig site calamitous So you just want to be looking out for the enemies that have like a special name So in this case it was Slayer Rosalind over here There'll be a bunch of different named enemies as well. I think if we click on zone monsters down here uh, Harrow the sickle is an example of one of them frost caller Fawzi is another example as well So killing named enemies in this area of the map will get you the syncretic bow and then if we just go further down in the guide let's say that we're looking instead for some armor so the tae set which we were just talking about there or the wood grain set you can farm banes for that the keratin set named enemies in heliopolis so yeah i've tried to be pretty extensive but also keep it realistic in terms of the items that i recommend here are solo they do have the downside that they'll need to be upgraded at the gypsum kiln but it also is a huge upside that you get to choose the third perk and you know kind of make your dream item to some degree so there's a lot of items that we recommended in here um, most of them should be obtainable solo and again if you want to get a link to this guide it will be in the description down below but weapons armor and jewelry that can be attained solo and then upgraded the gypsum kiln there's quite a lot of that since the rise of the angry earth expansion as well the last thing i want to talk about in this video before we end it is the recruitment chat so if you open up your global chat over here and you go down to the recruitment section I assume this is the same across most servers. Um, you know, I usually just play on my server of Barry, but there's usually always some sort of message going on of people typing plus life ring or plus idle. Um, you know, it would be plus Castrum, plus wall, plus something, plus Merc guard. Uh, if you're on a North American server or indeed most other servers other than European servers, they use an X symbol instead, but it means the same thing. It basically means invite me for, and then whatever the content is that they want to do. So plus Merc guard or X Merc would be invite me for Merc guard. And they want to go up into the region of Merc guard up in the top of the map here. And uh, basically open chests, go through, kill enemies and open chests in that area. Plus wall or X wall would be the wall of Nebet Het. And now the way that you sort of interact with this is basically just typing the same thing. So you just parrot what other people are typing in recruitment chat. Hopefully an invite will pop up on your screen. You accept it and then you can open up the map, see where your players are. You'll they'll be represented with the little icons and then just go over to that area and open a bunch of chests. It may not sound like super exciting content, but it has become somewhat a staple of New World's Endgame uh, for a lot of players. And it's actually pretty rewarding. You can get items all the way up to 700 gear score just by doing this. And it probably is the most straightforward and easy way out of everything we recommend in this guide. It's just the good old classic chest run. So if everything else fails you in this video, if you don't have any luck with, with farming the Tei, uh, or the named items, if you can't get into a mutated expedition, if you hate the idea of PvP, at the end of the day, chest runs are also going to be a pretty good way to get geared. Now, what you do with that gear at that point, maybe just more chest runs or just link it in the chat and show off. That's up to you. Uh, but yeah, chest runs, uh, they can be jumped in just by basically typing X or plus and then the same word that you see other people doing. Uh, at some point, we're probably going to make a video where we cover all of the common abbreviations in New World. So life ring, for example, means the life ring items like the life ring rapier. Idol, I think is for the human idol, which is a trophy. But yeah, uh, if you guys would like to see a video like that, let me know in the comments down below. If you've made it this far in the video, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I know this was a bit of a long one, but I... I didn't want to like skimp out on information. I tried to keep it relevant and defer to the guide when we can, but I just have a habit of just so <laughs> thank you as always to edit to Jack for hopefully making this uh, digestible. If you guys enjoyed this video and you, you like hearing me talk about New World, I'm streaming it almost every day over on Twitch as well. So there's a link to the Twitch in the description down below and everything else that we talked about in today's video. And uh, yeah, as always, friends, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you go ahead, click the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.